Good day, mentors, and welcome to our Ed319, the teacher and the school curriculum session. For this session, we will be exploring Unit 3, Lesson 2. Unit 3 is about the phases and process of curriculum development. So we will continue with the second part of this particular module, and it is about approaches to curriculum designing. Today will be another opportunity for us to learn something and this time it will be the approaches to curriculum designing. Curriculum designing is a part of, of the curriculum development. So curriculum development produces curriculum designs and these are designs will be used in crafting, in planning, in implementing and evaluating the curriculum. So the development can be articulated a series of steps and these steps are the following. First, we define educational purposes. Educational purposes as to learning um, intended learning outcomes or the learning objectives um, which is always part of a minuscule curriculum or in developing a particular curriculum. Second is we construct activities or experiences that can meet these purposes. From the definition of educational purposes, we will now uh, construct what specific activities shall we need or shall we undertake in order for uh, or based on the educational purposes. The third is we organize activities or experiences from the definition of the purposes or the intended learning outcomes. For example, we construct and we think of activities or experiences. After constructing activities and experiences that is or that are aligned to the educational purposes or the outcomes, we will now organize activities and experiences. And in organization, we are to do, we are to facilitate, we are to conduct or we are to implement. And afterwards is we evaluate whether purposes have been met based on the organization of the activities and the organization are based on how it was constructed and the construction of the activities are based on how we define educational purposes. As teachers, we are to identify the outcomes, we construct activities based on the outcomes, we organize the activities, and we evaluate the activities. The designs can be articulated or described as an arrangement of curricular elements or components. And these are, one, the aim, the rationale, the audience, and the objectives. So, what are the designs in the curriculum? The first one is the subject-centered designs. The subject-centered design focuses on the content of curriculum corresponding mostly. And these are the subjects. The subjects contain topics or contents. It is actually content-based. It corresponds mostly to the textbook, the written for a special subject. Henry Morrison and William Harris as firm believers of this particular design. Schools divide school hours to different subject areas. So how many hours are given for English, for Filipino, for mathematics, for music, arts, physical education, and health, for araling panlipunan, for, for values education? The Philippines, likewise, divides curricula through subjects in different levels. So how about for grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, grade 5, grade 6, high school, and college. Schools that use this design aim for excellence in the subject matter content. And this is actually in the first pillar of education or first pillar of learning and that is learning to know. We need to know the subjects. That is why in, in elementary, in high school, and in college or in any levels of education, we have to pass through these subjects because the, educate, uh, the, the experts of curriculum or curriculum experts think that we have to have good foundation and that is through the subjects. So what are examples of subject-centered designs? Okay, subject design. It's advantageous because it is easy to deliver with available books and support instructional materials commercially available. Okay, we have books published by... Um, We have the Department of Education. We have the 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 different publishing houses. No, in 
it's in the Philippine, um, in the Philippines or in the Philippine educational system, the number of subjects in the elementary is fewer than in the secondary level. In college, subjects differ in the degree or programs being pursued. A disadvantage of this design is that learning is so compartmentalized. It's departmentalized, stressing so much content and forgetting about the students' natural tendencies, interests, and experiences. The second category is the discipline design. It is related to the subject design, but it was subject design center only in the cluster of content. The discipline design focuses on the academic disciplines, and this design is often used in college but not in elementary or secondary. Subject is a more of the elementary or secondary in the high school uh, in the college where academic disciplines are are focused. So um, each um, course, no, um, each um, no, it's each program or each degree program to be specific. They have um, specific areas. We call it area of specialization. It's discipline. Based, it's academic discipline based. So we have um categorized in the in the college, for example, the general education subjects, the professional education subjects, or the industrial management subjects, and then the area of specialization or its field of specialization. So the discipline design is more of the college, while the subject design is for the elementary or high school in the basic education. That is why in college. The subjects are not termed as um subjects; they are courses. And like for example, the Bachelor of Elementary Education or the Bachelor of Secondary Education is not a course; it's actually a program. The course is the subject, specifying um academic disciplines. So third is correlation design. It comes from the core correlated curriculum design that links separate subject designs in order to reduce the fragmentation. So meaning, um, there are the subjects are compa- uh, co- compartmentalized rather, but they are actually correlated. So the 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 core, no, the correlation, the subjects are related to one another, but each subject maintains uh, its identity. Though uh, we can connect, no, we can correlate the different subjects, but each subject has distinct competencies to be mastered. Fourth, broad field design or interdisciplinary design. It's a variation of the subject center design. This was made to prevent compartmentalization because the subject design um it's this advan- uh, it's one of its bad um notion is that it is com- uh, very compartmentalized but to prevent compartmentalization of the subjects and integrate the contents that are related to each other we have this particular broad field design or the interdisciplinary design this is also known as the holistic curriculum where we see that each discipline can be interdependent so which is related also to correlation design the second design is the learner center design the learner centered um the learner is the center of the educative process strongly emphasized the elementary level but secondary and tertiary levels have been included and considered as leading in learner centered designs What are the examples? Child-centered design attributed to John Dewey, Pestalucci, Froebel. This design is anchored on the needs and interests of the child. The learner is not a passive individual but as one who engages with his or her environment. One learns by doing. That is why activities um, must be um, student perspective, and stu- the teachers will have to facilitate activities. Uh, activities where students will have to do hands-on. Learners actively create, construct meanings and understandings as viewed by constructivists. Learners interact with the teachers and the environment. Thus, there is a collaborative effort on both sides to plan lessons, select content, and do activities. Together, as um, an advocate for a child-centered design, um, that the teacher um, will have to focus more on student-initiated activities. The teacher here is 
or should be the facilitator of learning. The second is experience-centered designs. Similar to child-centered design, And it believes that, or the design believes that interests and needs of learners cannot be pre-planned. Instead, the experience of learners become the starting point of the curriculum. So we let our students to discover new learning out of their prior knowledge or prior experience. Learners are made to choose from various activities that the teacher provides. Multiple intelligence theory blends well with the experience-centered curriculum. One good example is the conduct of differentiated learning activities. And uh, in grouping, we have to group them based on different uh, on forms of, of of the intelligences, so that um students um can feel at ease and they can really uh, exert efforts based on their knowledge and skill. The third design is problem-centered design. It draws on social problems, needs, interests, and abilities of the learners. Various problems are given emphasis those that center on life situations, contemporary life problems, areas of living, and many others. Content must be based on the needs, concerns, and abilities of the students. Okay, um, um, students are led to identify problems and students are led to solve problems. So if there is a particular theme or topic, then the teacher will have to use a problem-based approach where or problem-based learning in order for students to identify the issue or concern and then what would be the strategic action that should be done in order to solve the problem. So in that in this way the students are given um, or will the teacher will let the students to acquire decision making skill in identifying and solving problems. Examples of problem-centered design, life situation design, contents are organized in ways that allow students to clearly view problem areas. It uses the past and present experiences of learners as a means of analyzing basic areas of living. The connection of subject matter to real-life situations increases the relevance of the curriculum. So why this is important and why students are motivated to Um, to listen to the teacher, to to participate in all the activities because the students think that the activities given by the teacher are connected to their day-to-day activities. And that is life situation design. So our, um, our foundation uh, should be the situations and experiences of, of, of the students to real life situations and this will increase the relevance or there is connectedness of the curriculum to the child's real life in the in the child's real life setting core design it centers on general education and problems which are based on common human activities the central focus of the core design includes common needs problems concerns of the learners popularized by Ponce and Bossing in 1959, they present ways on how to proceed uh, following a core design of curriculum as follows. The problem is either selected by either the teacher or the learner, so it could be controlled, which means that the teacher have to choose what specific problem, issue, or concern, or you let your students to tell or to identify the problem with the facilitation of the teacher. A group consensus is made to identify important problems and interest of the class. So the group, no, there is collaborative learning activity, this time in the identification of important problems. You may have um, a situation no, or a situationer and you let your students identify the problem in the situationer by group and then let them do or formulate strategic action. Problems are selected on the basis of developed criteria for selection and the problem is clearly stated and defined. Areas of study are decided, including dividing the class by individual or group interests. Needed information is listed and discussed and resources for obtaining information are listed and discussed. Information is obtained and organized and information is analyzed and interpreted. 
A tentative solutions are stated and tested. A report is presented to the class on an individual or group basis. Conclusions are evaluated and new avenues of exploration toward further problem solving are examined. One good example is you let your students watch a particular video clip about air pollution. Okay? You let them group and then you are uh, you gave them uh, you give them specific time element for them to identify problems or issue um, with a video that they watch and from that video clip you let them brainstorm you know the 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 strategic action that an individual or member of a community can do in order to help solve the problem or issue or concern And then afterwards, you let them um, collate um, the strategic actions um, which are shared by individual member of the grouping. And afterwards, you let them make graphic organizer or in any um, way of presenting the collated data or information. And you let them present by group or it could be individual. So after that one, okay, um, conclusions or the the final uh, final statements can be facilitated through questions, or it could be through code, or it could be um um teacher um facilitated um activity, and new avenues of exploration toward further problem solving can be examined through collaboration. So what are the dimensions of curriculum designs? One is the scope. Tyler in Ornstein 2004 defined scope as all the content, the topics, the learning experiences, and organi- uh, organizing threads comprising the educational plan. So it uh, does not only refer to the cognitive content but also to the affective and the psychomotor co- content. So the scope is about content. It refers the coverage of the curriculum, the topics. It provides boundaries in curriculum as it applies to the different educational levels, because um, the the level of difficulty, the intensity differs as to elementary, high school, and college. Curriculum is time bound, hence the appropriate scope should be provided so that the curricular coverage should not be too much nor too minimal. In the present or in the new normal academic setup, we need to streamline topics, the scope, because um we don't know no what will happen. It could be there could be class suspension, um because of the of the health crisis that we are currently experiencing. So we need to choose. Um, the most essential topics to be delivered, the most essential skills. Mona, in the Department of Education, they have formulated the MELC. The MELC stands for the most essential learning competencies. Kaya usahay taas, kaya tadagan, kaya tag topics, no? Grabe kaya atong scope sa, or coverage sa curriculum. And the essential skills are sometimes less prioritized. Other considerations in determining scope are time diversity. So, ang imuhang topic, in, in example, in lesson plan or a, which is an example of a minuscule curriculum, um, taas, uh, kwa na ba siya? No? Sakto ba siya sa time element? Ang topic ni mo, sakto ba sa time element? The maturity of learners, are they ready to receive that particular topic? To receive, um, to acquire those skills mentioned? complexity of content and level of education the scope of the curriculum can be di- divided into chunks no called units subunits chapters or subchapters so you could have the one chapter but it's quite too long um, in the delivery of the content you have to do it by subchapters or subunits the division of the content may use the deductive principle or the from general to specific from the whole to the parts which will have a cascading arrangement or the inductive that's special or no it's from specific to general that's the 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 inductive arrangement no from examples to generalization second is sequence the sequence provides continuous and cumulative learning the vertical relationship among the elements of the curriculum smith stanley and shore introduced the four principles simple to complex 
Content and experiences are organized from simple to complex, from concrete to abstract, from easy to difficult. This principle is based on the developmental theories of learning and cognition. Like even for assessment tool, no, we start with the easiest question. An essay are usually in the last part because it needs higher order thinking skill. And the first question usually in an exam, it sh- it should be um it can be easily answered by the students. And that is based on developmental theories of learning and cognition. The prerequisite learning, there are fundamental things to be learned ahead, like addition before multiplication. In mathematics or letters before words or words before phrases and phrases before sentences. In college, for example, you cannot take example uh, example of subjects. So you cannot take advanced calculus a uh, calculus two if you have not taken advanced calculus one. No, so there are subjects or disciplines in uh, in the tertiary education uh, in college. Which are pre- uh, uh, which needs prerequisite subjects. No, there are subjects which need prerequisite subjects in order because. Uh, what's the reason? Because there could be skills that you need to to acquire first in the previous subject to the continuing subject. Like for example, there are uh, you need to master the uh, uh, contents and skill for calculus one before going. Or proceeding to calculus two, so prerequisite learning, the fundamental things to be learned ahead. So you cannot simply saying you cannot proceed to step ten if you have not undergone steps one to nine. Whole to part learning. This principle has a relation to gestalt, the overview before the specific content or topics. The meaning can be very well be understood if everything will be taken as a whole. You start, mo you begin with an end in mind. So it's a holistic approach. Nga you start with the whole, and then before going to the specific content or topics, which is deductive in nature. So it's whole to part. So you let your students see first the whole thing before. Um, presenting the specific topics in teaching how to um, cook pinakbet, you have to let them show first what pinakbet looks like before discussing the ingredients, before demonstrating the steps in the making of pinakbet. Fourth, chronological learning. The order of events is made as a basis of sequence, uh, sequencing the content and experiences. This principle is closely allied to history, political science, or world events. So it's chronological. It needs order. Time is a factor to be considered. The sequence can be arranged from the most recent to the distant past or vice versa. Ayaw paguna sa contemporary time. Paguna sa, sa pre-Spanish. No? or sa pre-colonial period or pre-Spanish then Spanish and then American period It, this is in history no? and Japanese and then the Commonwealth period and then the present or the contemporary period that is chronological in nature so Posner and Radnitsky 1994 presented five major principles for organizing content into units which can also be applied to a curriculum world related sequence so what relationships exist among people objects or events of the world how can contents and experiences be arranged so that they will be consistent with the world one is space that's close closest to farthest bottom to top east to west teach the parts of the plant from the roots to the stem to the leaves and flowers and fruits so the space Second is the time, similar to chronological principle. Third, physical attributes refer to the physical characteristics of the phenomena such as age, size, the brightness, and letter B, concept-related sequence reflects the organization of the conceptual world, how ideas are related in a logical manner. Example, in class re- uh, for class relations, Class concept refers to the group or set of things that share common practices, teaching the characteristics of a class ahead of the characteristics of the member of the class. Second, propose, uh, propositional 
propositional relations. A proposition is a statement that asserts something. Sequence is arranged so that the evidence is presented ahead before the proposition. C. Inquiry-related sequence. Based on the scientific method of inquiry, on the process of generating, discovering, and verifying knowledge, content, and experiences sequenced logically and methodi uh, methodically. Learner or learning-related sequence based on the psychology of learning and how people learn. Empirical prerequisites. The sequence is primarily based on empirical studies where the prerequisite is required before learning the next level. So prerequisite learning, familiarity. Prior learning is important in sequence. That is why activating prior knowledge is very important as part of the of your lesson plan and in the implementation of the curriculum. What is familiar? should be taken up first before the unfamiliar. So, muna siya na atay KWL technique. So, what you have known, what you ha, uh, what you want to learn, and then what have you learned? The KWL technique. So, you first start with the known before the unknown. So, third, difficulty. Easy content is taken ahead than difficult one. And interest, contents, and experiences that stimulate interests are those that are novel. This can arouse the curiosity of the learner. Um, that is why you have to maintain or we have to sustain the motivation. Third, continuity. Um, it is related to the vertical repetition and recurring appearances of the content provide continuity in the curriculum. So this process in enables the learner to strengthen the per permanency of learning and development of skills. Brunner calls this the spiral curriculum. So what's that? So where the content is organized according to interrelationship between the structure of the basic ideas of a major discipline. So we keep on... <clears throat> repeating contents but as they go as higher level um, it differs with the complexity and difficulty the higher level that they will reach with the same contents but it differs with difficulty or complexity for learners to develop the ideas these have to be developed and redeveloped in a spiral fashion in increasing depth breathe as a learner's advance fourth integration so everything is integrated and interconnected life is a series of emerging themes that is why it is interdisciplinary it is interdependent it is interconnected organization is drawn from the world themes from the uh, for the world themes from real life concerns so subject matter content or disciplined content lines are erased and isolation is eliminated fifth articulation this can be vertical articulation or horizontal articulation so in vertical articulation contents are arranged from level to level or grade to grade so level one two three four five six or grades one two three four five six uh grade seven eight nine ten for junior high grades 11 and 12 that's senior high um first year college to fourth year college it's vertical articulation horizontal articulation happens when the association among or between the elements that happen at the same time it could be within the level but it um, there is expansion no, of the contents or topics delivered. Sixth, balance. Equitable assignment of content, time, experiences, and other elements. It requires the continuous fine-tuning and review for its effectiveness and relevance, making it balanced no, in the delivery of the content. What are the takeaway or takeaways for today's session? A teacher who is attempting to teach without inspiring the pupil with a desire to learn is hammering on cold iron. Every student can learn just not on the same day or the same way. And the whole purpose of education, mentors, is to turn mirrors into windows. You create eight activities which are realistic in nature there are subjects but 
You have to be experience-based. You have to be problem-based in order for them to acquire good decision-making skills. There are dimensions of curriculum. There are designs of curriculum. We are implementers of the frontline implementers of the curriculum. But it is up to us how we can turn mirrors into windows for our students. Thus, producing lifelong learners if we are lifelong teachers. Thank you so much everyone and good day, mentors!